James Dutton for Slough Box. Delighted to be joined today here at Joe Gallagher's gym with Jose Burton. Jose, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good. Good stuff. Now we're in a fight camp, a few weeks away now from fight night. How's it been? How's camp been? Yeah, it's been good, yeah. It's been pretty good. Um, enjoying myself. Uh, moving up at Cruiserweight now, so everything's quite fun instead of being so hard and stressful. What's the difference is I see, you know, the making weight is the main thing there. Is it a lot easier? Yeah, listen. Making weight's worse than the fight, you know. That that's a six or eight or ten week fight, you know. Having the fight is only 36 minutes, for, you know, it's not, it's not long. But the six weeks making the weight, that that's the uh, that's the killer. And you mentioned those you seem to be finding it a lot easier now at the new weight. What differences do you think there'll be inside the ring rather than outside of it? Well, I'll have a lot of uh, I'll have a lot of energy, which I've not had for the last couple of years. Um, last time I made weight properly was Adjusaf. After that was lockdown, and um, I put on a lot of weight because obviously I thought I was going to die during lockdown, you know, thinking it's or lose one of my family even. So um, yeah, I, I ate and drank what I want, and I put a load of weight on. And I couldn't really ever get it off again. When I did get it off, my performance shows I wasn't the same man as I once was. So it's time I moved up. Why is it time now? Why have you only just realised now? Because. Um, I had a real hard fight with um, Blotniks, who I think I should be able to beat. I had a hard fight with Liam Conroy, who I did beat, but lucky enough I beat him when I did, because if I never knocked him out in that round, he would have definitely beat me later on in the fight, because I was I was goosed. And then I got beat for uh, Dan Aziz, who boxed really good on the night, but he shouldn't be able to beat me, and he stopped me, so... That, that, that's why I, I moved up. Are you disappointed with your performances and those results? Yes, majorly disappointed. But do you know what? I waited five years to get another shot at the British title. I finally got a shot, but it was too late. You know, I used to walk around at 13 stone and get down to 12 7 and make it fine. Now I walk around at 15, now 16 stone. So walk around that 16 stone, that 6 foot 4, to get down to 12 stone 7. I just couldn't do it. Do you feel a new lease of life now? Yeah, well look, all the pressure's off me. If I lose my next fight, I pack in and I'll be happy packing in. Because after my last fight, I thought, yeah, I'll just retire. So I've got no pressure of trying to protect a decent record or whatever. I've lost three fights, so that decent record's out the window. So I've got no pressure on me. I'm, I'm actually boxing just to have a bit of fun. So I'm training hard and I think I think you'll see some good things come out of me at Cruiserweight. You mentioned if you lose your next fight, you'd be ready to retire. With that on your mind, what's your, what is your mindset now going forward with the rest of your career? Because in your head, it sounds like you're already thinking, I'll just retire if I lose again, no worries. My mindset's always been lose and you pack in. What good is it being the, the nearly man? So after my first loss, I was going to pack in. Then I just had a couple of weeks off and then I got itchy knuckles again. I thought, yeah, get back to the gym. So after my second loss, I never really thought all that much about packing in. I, I, I did think, yeah, all right then, just just, just pack in. But then I thought I never had a real fair shake of the stick. I went to Latvia. I felt as I won the first four and the last one should have been the draw. Or I should have lost by a point or two because it took a couple of standing counts. But when I lost ten rounds to nil, I thought, right, I never had a fair chance, so I'll just have another go. So anyway... Um, it's not like I'm half beaten man. I'm not a beaten man before we start. Listen, whoever's got gets in there, they've got to beat me before they beat me, if you know what I mean. You know, I'm not going in there half cocked. I'm going in there with a the winner's mentality and I'll, I'll, and I'll beat anybody who gets put in front of me. Now, for yourself, what if you lose your next fight, you decide to retire, you get itching up again? Is it back in the gym again? No, what is it? No, definitely not. If I lose my next fight, I'll go to work. I'm only doing this to satisfy my own mind, this, this, these last few fights. You know, when, when I lose to whoever I lose to, hopefully I never lose and hopefully I go on to box until 50 year old, but there's much more money in going to work than years in boxing. So, what's the point? I've had a good career, I've been a British champion, I've been an ABA champion, I've been a boys club champion, I've been a schoolboy champion. I've done quite a lot in my life. Okay, I've not reached the pinnacle of Tyson Fury, Billy Joe, Andy Lee, world champions. But as a gypsy man, I've done a hell of a lot. 
a lot more than a lot of people has. So I'll be happy with my career. I'll be happy to retire. So I was going to sort of got your answer there for the next question already. But looking back now and reflecting on your career, you're happy with what you've done. I'm 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 very happy with what I've done. I would like to do more, as anyone would like to do more. Look, everyone turns professional want to be a world champion. I wanted to be a world champion. You know, British champion was good. World champion would have been great, but you know, if it comes, it comes, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Hopefully, we get a fight on with Jack Massey. He's a world champion. I'll take that from him. Absolutely, and it's a fairly local fight as well. He's not too far down the road from here. Is that a fight that you want? You know, you can say you win your next fight, next two fights, whatever it may be. Is that the ultimate goal now for yourself? Well, listen, Jack Massey's a lovely lad, but yeah, I'd love to have a fight with him. Yeah, he's a world champion, and I'd love to fight him. I wouldn't just be a cunt and just plague him all the time and taunt him to him to it but I like him I think he's a nice lad but yeah I would like to have a fight with him he's a world champion so why would you not want to have a fight with a world champion so definitely and finally as you mentioned there see Andy Lee Tyson Fury Billy Joe Saunders you know with these other fighters have reached that world title level and a lot of traveller fighters coming through as well these guys have been the the role models for you guys is that right to say for well, the younger listen, generation for now. the younger generation they have, yeah. Not for me, because I was I was boxing before Tyson was, yeah. you know. I, I had my first fight way before Tyson had his first time to fight. We're first cousins, me and Tyson, so I know a lot about him. So, um, Billy Joe, you know, we would be all boxing around the same age. Andy Lee, okay, Andy Lee. I watched him in the Olympics and I thought, oh, look at him, he's went to the Olympics. He, yeah, he inspired me a fair bit to, to dig in and keep on going. Because I was only a young amateur when I seen him in the Olympics. So um, I think we have opened the doors up to a lot of people, especially them, is, is made young travelling kids. Because you look at the, the championships, a lot of young gypsy kids wins. They win most of the national titles, what's about, um, ABAs, whatever, they, they win a lot. So they usually pack in when they get to 15, 16, 17, when they can start going to work. But looking at Tyson's just multi-millionaire, Billy Joe's a multi-millionaire, Andy Lee's a millionaire, you know, it's just, you know, they, they realise there's good money in boxing. Well, again, I was going to ask that as well, you know, they you see them all at amateur level, like you say, winning left, right, centre, and now they seem to be more and more gypsy kids turning over and turning pro, and like I say, it's because they now see there can be money made in the sport. Yeah, well, it can be a lot of money, but listen, there's two boxers, there's rich boxers and there's poor boxers. There's not really many in the middle, you're either rich or poor. There's a lot more poor ones than there is rich ones. So, them, them good boxers should pack it in and go to work because there's a lot more money in that. But them really good boxers, stick it out because you just never know you're looking in a big city. Absolutely. Well, Jose, thank you for your time. Best of luck for a few weeks' time. Thank you, mate. Thank you.